Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. One of the hotly anticipated movies of this year, I genuinely think so, is Bullet Train. It looks great. It looks absolutely fantastic. And one of the things the Japanese are renowned for is not giving a shit about 2022 values. Uh, they are renowned for it. They're not interested. They're very traditional, very, I guess, conservative in that outlook. They're not interested in it at all. So Bullet Train gets released. It's an adaptation of a, of a book. It gets, it gets released, trailer and, and such. And the online outrage that there's no Jap that you know there's barely any Japanese assassins. Oh, we're offended on behalf of the Japanese. Oh. Well, anyway, the author's come out and gone, what are you on about? No. It's malleable. It's the setting that matters. The assassins don't. Utter, utter nonsense. Stop getting offended on behalf of people, please. And let's take a look at this, because this is absolute gold. Bullet Train director, writer, and Maria Beetle, so that's the uh, book that it's adapted from, author, explain choice to cast non-Japanese actors. The characters are... not real people. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Or author Kotaro Asaka says his story's ragtag crew of killers are maybe not even Japanese in response to criticism of how the film cast most of the assassins from his popular novel set in Japan. If the author doesn't give a toss, I don't think it really matters, does it? I mean, he literally says, well... They might not even be Japanese, to be honest. Like, obviously he, you know, wrote this as a setting more than anything else. And, you know, a narrative. Rather than the individual ethnicities of the characters. That's not important. It's set in Japan. That's it. And obviously it needs to be, because it's on a Japanese bullet train. Ah, oh, but this is utterly hilarious. So the Maria Beetle author, alongside the director and writer of its big screen adaptation, Bullet Train have opened up about the film's decision to cast non-Japanese actors in the upcoming Sony feature film. It's hilarious that the author has to come out and justify... You know, a, Jap a Japanese author has come out to justify why they've cast non-Japanese actors in the adaptation. I mean, clown world. In an interview with New York Times, author Kotaro Isaka was asked about how his story which was originally published in Japan in 2010 and had its English language debut in print last year, has been adapted by Hollywood. According to the Times, the author regards his characters as ethnically malleable. Love that. And maintains his original Japanese setting and context do not matter as much as the story's ragtag crew of killers are not real people and maybe they're not even Japanese. So his original Japanese setting uh, and the context do not matter as much because the story's ragtag crew of killers are not real people and maybe not even Japanese. Straight to the point. And this does look good, by the way. I'm really excited for Bullet Train. I think it looks fantastic. Um, you know, they open up, what was it? With, with the, is it the Bee Gees in the uh, trailer? It's great. Bullet Train, Sony's big screen adaptation of the story about a high-speed rail full of assassins Features a cast of black, Latino, Asian, and white talent from the US, UK, and Japan. That includes Brad Pitt, Sandra Bullock, uh, Michael Shannon, Brian Tyree Henry, uh, Joey King, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Andrew Koji, Zazie Beats, Karen Fukuhara, uh, Hiroyuki Sanada, great actor, good to see him in more things, uh, Massey Oka, Logan Lerman, and Bad Bunny. So, Sanford Panich, president of Sony Pictures Entertainment Motion Picture Group, said Isaka's stance on Bullet Train's casting gave us comfort in honouring its Japanese soul, but at the same time giving the movie a chance to get big giant movie stars and have it work on a global scale. And this is the thing, right? Like, you have to have the talent behind it for, you know, <laughs> undeniably a film like this would probably have done okay, but now it's got Brad Pitt in the starring role, it will do infinitely better than if you didn't have Brad Pitt in the starring role. And so this is the thing, like you have to be 
as a business, and obviously if the author's fine with it, then it's fine. Like adaptations do need to be true to source to respect the author's original intention. But if the original author is still alive and is sat there going, No, I literally don't I don't care. Like they're ethnically malleable, it's absolutely fine. Do not care. Then it's not a problem. You can't be offended on behalf of them. So for Bullet Pro, uh, for, for Bullet Train, screenwriter Zach uh, Olkowicz, the decision to cast beyond Japanese or even more broadly with different Asian talent just shows you the strength of the original author's work and how this could be a story that could transcend race anyway. Wow. A Hollywood writer saying a story can transcend race. Oh my god. The way things go, you'd think it was just solely about race these days. Um, the decisions around the film's casting choices have been heavily criticised online including by Asian American media, of, of course Asian American media would, again, you know, any cross uh, American, you know, culture would be offended on behalf of everyone for everything. Uh, and cultural groups who have argued that the movie whitewashes the original story's ensemble of Japanese assassins. Well, I'm going to sit here and go, you are dimming uh, a prominent Japanese author's voice. Who thinks it's absolutely fine? Why are you speaking on behalf of Japanese people? Uh, by casting non-Japanese actors in many of the film's most prominent roles. The exception is Japanese actor Koji, who plays uh, Kimura, one of the main assassins in the movie. Uh, and it's out in theatres August 5th, which I, I have to go watch this. It looks so good. Speaking to, I assume that's Asian American News in March, uh, David Inui, Executive Director of the Japanese American Citizens League. Uh, echoed sentiments that the movie's casting was an actor of whitewashing. Okay, but the Japanese author, who's Japanese, says it's fine. So what's the issue? As Bullet Train is a story that remains set in Japan and is based around characters that are originally Japanese. Yeah, but the author's fine with it, so it's fine. Foreigners, or Gaijin. Dude, your name's David Inui. You're part of the Japanese American Citizens League. You can't sit there and go foreigners or Gaijin. You're, 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 you're American. It's fascinating how many Americans think they're something else. Irish Americans firmly believe they're Irish. If you went to Ireland, they would laugh in your face. I'm sure it's the same with this David Inouye. If he went to Japan, they would probably laugh in his face. Foreigners of Gaijin remain a distinct minority in Japan. They do, because they have really strong Im immigration laws. Uh, and to populate the movie with so many in the leading roles is, is uh, ignoring the setting. Of course, he said before speaking of uh, to how the film undermines recent progress made in Hollywood around casting Asian and Asian American talent. This movie seeks to affirm the belief that Asian actors in the leading roles cannot carry a blockbuster, despite all the recent evidence indicating otherwise, beginning with Crazy Rich Asians and extending to Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi did well because of Marvel, nothing else. Um, that It just had the Marvel name. It didn't do that well either. I think, if I remember rightly, it lost a little bit of money or just broke even. Crazy Rich Asians did well, um, but this doesn't affirm, there's no belief that Asian actors in leading roles cannot carry a blockbuster, that's not the case at all. It's, can you hire someone with a with a big enough name? I mean, you do, it doesn't get that much bigger than Brad Pitt. That's a pretty big name to have. Like, that's a good, that's a good get. While well, speaking to the New York Times, Bullet Train director David Leach noted that a discussion around whether to keep the story in Osaka's original setting of Tokyo was broached, but he ultimately decided that Tokyo is as international of a city as anywhere. I mean, he's not wrong. We had conversations like, maybe it could be Europe, maybe it could be a different part of Asia. Where could we see all these international types colliding? Uh, and while the movie remains set in Japan, it wasn't actually filmed in Tokyo due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, they had strict lockdowns over there. Uh, instead, it was captured on a soundstage, shifting it into Japanese future or like a Gotham City, according to Osaka, who says he was relieved Bullet Train is now based in a world that people don't know. Interesting. Uh, as for how the movie features its Japanese characters, according to the Times, uh, Olkowicz said that the team worked to persevere, or preserve, sorry, the three generations of one Japanese family featured in Osaka's novel, though they are not at the centre of the film like many of the other characters are. People who haven't necessarily seen the movie will be surprised to find out that the plot pretty much kind of is about the Japanese characters and their storylines getting that resolution. We were all really aware and wanted to make it super inclusive and international. I mean, look, the author doesn't care. It's fine. 
you don't get a bigger name than Brad Pitt. Sorry. Sorry. Just is what it is. Again, do you want the film to do well? If the author's fine with it, it's fine. You can't be offended on behalf of them. Like, his work, he's happy with it. That's where you should just respect it and go, yeah, that's fine. Also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out my Teespring store. Supporting the channel via this way does go a long way. But also, not only that, you do get to wear some awesome merch. These are one-of-a-kind designs designed for me by my graphic designer. We, of course, have our Clown World line, which is uh, in mugs, hoodies, t-shirts. We've got Space Jeebus. Uh, and then for something a little bit different, we, of course, have right down at the bottom right here, we have our Pulsar GTIR. Also, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out and supporting my second channel, which is Car Nonsense. This is a vlog and car channel. You can find links to this in the description box along with my Teespring. Please do consider supporting.